Right. So we've got negative x plus 3y equals 6. And the student just said to me, let's, let's go ahead and stick a 1 in front of that x because it, it might help, right? Now it's negative 1x. Um, but um, your, you guys' first task um, is to get y on its own, all right? So you have to solve this formula, basically, for y. So you have to get y equals something. Now, this is something that students will struggle with. I, I would be delighted if you get it right off the bat. I don't expect you to. I expect you to get stuck somewhere along the way. That's fine. But I do want everyone to struggle with it, to press pause on this video and give it a go. So please press pause on the video, try to solve this for Y, and then play the video and check your answer. Okay, so I hope you've all tried it. Um, there are two things being done to Y here. It's been multiplied by 3. And then there's like a negative 1X being added on. So the first thing to do, you kind of go... You, you get rid of this x first and then get rid of the 3, all right? So to get rid of the adding 1x, the, the, the opposite, the inverse operation to adding 1x is to subtract, or sorry, is to, is to add 1x. So adding negative 1x. So if I add 1x, uh, this will make this 0, right? Because negative 1x plus 1x is 0. If I add 1x to the left of the equation, I must also add 1x to the right of the equation. And so this makes 0, so I have 3y equals 6 plus 1x, or 1x plus 6. I'm just going to put the x term in front. But you, could, you guys can write 6 plus 1x, and that's also correct. You okay with that? Yes. All right. So the next step is to get y on its own. To get y on its own is to get rid of this 3. And I want you all to think about it that it's actually 3 times y. It's not 3 plus y. It's 3. So you have to undo multiplying by 3. And a lot of students make a mistake here. That's perfectly fine. But I do want everyone to press pause on the video, try it yourself, then press, then play the video and check your answer. So... Hope you all tried it. So to undo the, uh, multiplying by 3, we need to divide by 3. So if I divide by 3 on the left, I get y equals something. But I must do the same thing to the right-hand side. I must divide by 3. And you actually need to divide each individual term by 3. Okay? And the reason for that is, if, if you imagine, uh, let's take um, something like 10 plus 20, that's 30, right? Uh, 10 plus 20 uh, plus like uh, 40. So let's say I had th th uh, three numbers being added together. And <clears throat> let's say I was going to divide all of this by um, 10 or 2 or 5 or whatever. I'll just divide all by 10, right? What you actually have to do is we have to divide each individual number by 10. Because what we have here is 10 and 20 is 30. 30 and 40 is 70. I have 70 over 10, which is 7. So, so the answer is definitely 7, right? And I, by the way, where did this come from? I just made it up as an example. So I just made up this example out of nowhere. Um, but, but So I can either add everything on the top and then divide by 10, or I can actually divide each individual number by 10, right? And it looks like uh, this. Uh, 10 over 10 is 1. 20 over 10 is 2. 40 over 10 is 4. And what's 1 plus 2 plus 4? 7. Probably 7, yeah. So it's fine. Like, if you can actually add everything on the top and then divide, that's great. Like, 70 over 10 is 7. But we can't because we don't have like terms, right? So it's all of this. Uh, sorry. So, so what we have is, is, you know, what x or x plus 6, like all over 3. And um, we can't add x plus 6 to get anything because they're not like terms. So we have to divide each one individually. So, so long story short, we divide each thing by 3, and we get 1x over 3 or 1 third x, same thing. 1 third times x is the same thing. Plus 6 plus over two. 3, which is plus 2. Yep. 
So, um, so that's that. And now we're going to get some points. And we got to plug these guys in for X. They've asked us to plug in negative 3, 0, and 3, which is great because those are multiples of 3, and we have 3 in the denominator. So we're going to plug in negative 3, 0, and 3 in for X um, to get the Y values. So what I want you all to do is press pause on the video, plug in all three numbers, and then check the video to make sure you're correct. So, so plug in each one of these for x. So you're going to plug in like a negative 3 for x, plug in 0, and then plug in 3, right? All right. So good job. So we got a third times negative 3. And I can write that negative 3 over 1. And then the 3s cross cancel, and I've got um, negative. So the 3s cross cancel, and I've got negative 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. So that's a negative one plus two. Um, and, but then some students like to multiply the tops. They like to write like this, negative three over three plus two. And that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, because that will give you negative one plus two, which is positive one, right? This one, a third time zero is zero, and zero plus two is two. This one, again, write the three as three over one. And one times three is three. And 3 times 1 is 3, so you get 3 over 3 plus 2, which is 1 plus 2, which is 3. Um, and, of course, in this one, we could have cross-cancel the 1s, and that's just 1 over 1 times 1 over 1, which is just 1. Okay? We cross-cancel the 3s, I mean. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so when the x is, here's our x values, here's our y values, where our points turn out to be negative 3, 1. 0, 2, and 3, 3. So I want you all to please press pause on the video, plot these points, and draw a line through them. So I'll plot these points now. So each one is like an x value and a y. x, y, x, y. So here's our grid. We're going to start with x is negative 3, y is 1. So x is negative 3, y is 1. That's that point there. And then we have 0, 2. x is 0, y is 2. That's that point there. Then we have 3, 3. x is 3, y is 3. That's that point there. So these points are all in a straight line. And that's the graph there. And that's what we should have. And I'm just going to quickly point out that notice how the line goes through the y-axis at 2. And that's your y-intercept b, because look at this. y equals mx plus b. Our b is 2. Our slope m is 1 third. Now, if I get the rise over the run, if I take this point to get to this point, I can run three, rise one. Run three, rise one to get the next point. Run three, rise one. Run three, rise one. Run three, rise one. So each time I get the next point, I go run three, and I rise up one. And so look at that. My slope is one-third, and that's the coefficient of x here in the equation, right? 